Tell me, what do you know about temperaments? Anybody oh, know? Unpredictable They're unpredictable? <laughs> okay. Uh, you were going to say something? No, my mind immediately went to the sanguine and the... Oh, you're very right. Right. All of those labels. We have another gentleman here. Can we say good morning to him? Good morning. Good morning. Oh, you're special. That's why. <laughs> oh, that you're special or that you're a gentleman? <laughs> <laughs> okay, but you're right. Um, studies have shown over the years that there are four temperaments. And the reason why we're going to, uh, okay, if I can make this work. Uh, like that? Okay, right. Um, we're going to try and understand these as it relates to our children. Do you think our children have these personality traits? Do you really think so? Some hmm. of them are combined. <laughs> Some of them are combined. And, and you know, I think that's true for us too. And um, something that I, I want you all to do as soon as you have a chance is to go online and just Google temperaments. And there are all kinds of tests there that you can take to find out what you are. You know what you are? No, not terrible. Does anybody know what they are? Okay, a couple of you do. Okay. Well, what are you, sir? You are uh, between the two? Okay. What are you? Choleric. Choleric. Ooh, okay. <laughs> okay, so some of you know already. And actually, when you start talking with your children and working with them, sometimes there's a clash, you know? And, um, <clears throat> you know, I never really understood my husband too, uh, too well until I found out what his temperament was. And it's like, okay, that makes a lot of sense, you know, there, uh, sometimes when we're bumping heads. But at any rate, it's to understand and embrace the personalities that God has given in our children, as well as in ourself. And they are, what? Sanguine, choleric, melancholy, and phlegmatic. Okay, Let's see if I point this in the right direction. Okay, so each child is unique and has a personality that is unique to them. And we're going to talk a little bit about these personalities today. Okay, the sanguine child. You're going to recognize this child, right? Pure sunshine, likes to have fun, wants to be loved, and loves you. Do you know any like that? Oh, yeah. You're... Your granddaughter, okay? Well, I have a traveling companion that's usually with me. It's Candy DeVore, who is the editor of the magazine that you have in your folder. And Candy is pure sunshine. She is Candy, okay? And um, she's bubbly and, you know, just always vibrant and, you know, just wanting to please and all of that kind of stuff. And sometimes I'm like... Enough is enough, you know. <laughs> enough sunshine, let's have a little gloom, you know, or whatever. But that's candy, okay? So they're sociable. Sound familiar? Want to please. Life of the party, you know. If you want to have a great party, you know, that's the person that you want there, all right? Daring and eager, they chatter constantly. You know, do you ever have that child that's sitting in Sabbath school just... And, no, I have that at home. Uh-oh, you have it at home, too? <laughs> well, actually, we have one son that's like that. Out of the ten boys, he's the one that is, we call him motor mouth, okay? Because he never stops talking, and he's almost 50 years old. You know, I'm not sure what's going on with that. But, <laughs> but, and they're energized by people. All they have to do is be around a few people or a few other kids, and they're ready to go. Okay. They're inventive, imaginative, enthusiastic, and fun-loving. Okay, do we have anybody in the audience like that? Oh, oh even on camera. Okay. You have the gift of gab? My spiritual gift is gab. 
<laughs> okay. All right. Well, there's some challenges. Okay. And by the way, I'm going to give you a test when this is over. Okay. Hmm? Oh, no. <laughs> okay. Impulsive. For those of you that are, is that right? Okay. How about disorganized? Why are why disorganized? <laughs> okay. Well, there's the reason, and that's because you can, you know, you know. If I think that sometimes I think ADHD gets labeled wrong. It's just the personality because easily distracted. Okay, and, and I, I'm going to talk about Candy since she's in warm Hawaii this weekend and I'm here freezing in Georgia. But if I call her or I text her and I'll say, well, what do you think about whatever? She immediately starts working on it. And so I have to be really careful what I say because she's eas she'll easily stop doing what she's doing and, and go and do something else. <coughs> How about uh, easily led astray? What do you think? Depending on if you're a child or an adult. I think with a child, once you become an adult, you kind of can make that judgment. Do you think as an adult you kind of understand how you are and then you, you check it? Or you get tired. Or you get tired? <laughs> okay. What do you think over here? Do you think, as a, you think you grow out of some of these things or do they last a lifetime for you? You manage them better, yes. I think sometimes we, we say, well, I'm not being led astray, I'm just exploring over here. Okay. I'm being over here on purpose. I'm not being led, I decided to come here. Uh-huh. <laughs> and, and that makes you really flexible, right? Yeah. 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 You're in charge. Yes. I think as we mature as Christians, then become, then you begin to balance. Yeah. Um, it, there's a balance that takes place. Hopefully. Yeah. Because, <laughs> by the way, can you hear me all right back there? Okay, I know I'm sort of soft, but um, hopefully, yes, there's a balance between all four that takes place. Otherwise, some of these personalities can get you into trouble, you know, cause some real problems for you, especially in board meetings, okay? <laughs> all right, the clerics, clerics in the audience, we're going to talk about you. In children, they want to control at any cost, right? I mean, they are in charge. Do you know any adults like that? Yes. Some of them that didn't quite balance out, right? Okay. They're assertive, aggressive, competitive. Oh, my. You know, just love that competition. Born leaders. Well, there goes my class on servant leadership because they, they definitely want it their way or no way. Okay, they assume leadership, they see the goal, they're trustworthy, self-confident, self-sufficient, problem solvers, well-organized, daring, eager, fast, productive workers. You agree with all that? Can be, okay. Some of the clerics in the audience are saying yes. Okay. I have a child. Uh, you have a child like that? Okay. Challenges. Okay, let's see if this works. Manipulative, too bossy, won't play if they can't win. Wasn't that kind of what you were describing? Okay. Look down on dummies. What do you think? Mm-hmm. And also as they mature, hopefully okay. they mature in these areas and the Lord helps them to have this balance. Okay. Like we said a few minutes ago. So that's a combination. I think it's called the fruit of the spirit. <laughs> yes. You know, if if God isn't directing us, some of these things kind of take over, right? Okay. They think they know everything and they act before thinking, must make the rules and uh oh, okay. Must break the rules. Break or bend if it's not their rule. They live by a different set of rules. 
<laughs> they live by a different set of rules. Oh, you have, you have some great answers over here. Insistent and argumentative, their way is the only way. All right, so those are the challenges for children there. Okay, they are determined to do it right, and they are perfectionists. Who's that? Some melancholies. Melancholies. Any melancholies in the audience? Uh -huh. and, and we are a combination, you know, of them. Someone had said that Moses was a melancholy, and there's a scripture that tells us to avoid it. Really? Yes. I'm going to have to look that up. Yes. Okay. All right. So melancholies think deeply. They're musical, talented, perfectionist, serious, quiet, like a schedule. Does that sound right? You say no? Not in my son. He has all of the above except the schedule. Except the schedule. Okay. True friends. They're going to be your real true friends. They're intense, dutiful, responsible. They analyze others, and they are content to be alone. Does that sound like a melancholy? No. No? I'm a mixture. Oh, you're a mixture. Social, what do you call it at the beginning? I'm a mixture, I'm too. I'm a mixture, too, but I love being sociable. I love being here with everybody, but then I love my alone time. I send my husband to the mountain to stay the weekend, and I'm by myself. <laughs> and I love that time. Did you hear that, guys? She's sending her husband off. <laughs> How would you feel about being sent off? I'm with, I'm with her. <laughs> okay. How about you? He likes you? little man cave thing up on the mountain. He likes to go up there and do man things like he walking. He may see it as his escape. <laughs> <laughs> Well, so, so, someone asked me yesterday, how, how does your husband, you know, feel about your traveling so much? And I said, actually, it's his reprieve because I always leave him. Whenever I'm home, I have this honey-do list, you know about that. <laughs> so, okay, some of the challenges of a melancholy. All right, what do we have here? See and hear negatives, problems, depressed and withdrawn, suspicious and critical, won't communicate. Inferiority complex, mm -hmm. inflexible, revengeful, moody, self-conscious, too sensitive. Mm -hmm. Does that sound like a melancholy? Yes. yes. Okay. <laughs> that is kind of depressing, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yes. Uh -huh. I'm, a, I'm a mixture of the sacred and the melancholy, and I <coughs> actually consciously fight those things, the, the challenges in me. Mm -hmm. And um, some of it um, came from childhood experiences that grew up with me that I'm constantly battling. And that's where I think my melancholy comes in, just dealing with those childhood, childhood issues. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you think that sometimes, you know, like you say, your childhood or our environments kind of feed into this? Mm -hmm. yes. yeah. I think so. So what needs to happen? We need to change the environment, right? Okay. Okay, phlegmatic. These children are very easygoing and a joy to be around. They rarely act up and are easy to please. Those are the ones you love, right? Is that, is that you? <laughs> okay. Any phlegmatics in the audience? Okay, you're phlegmatic. You were a combination. Okay, all right. Well, <laughs> okay, the strengths of the phlegmatics, easygoing and undemanding. I don't know about that sometimes. Serious and dependable, happy and lovable, adjustable, agreeable. They watch others, okay. Easily amused, little trouble, good listeners. Mediate problems and hide emotions. Everything except the last. Well, I have to tell you that I am phlegmatic, okay? But there is another side of me that is definitely not. And in fact, my conference president used to say, the kitten has claws. 
<laughs> and when she scratches you, you're looking around to see where you were cut, but you can't find it, but you know you got scratched. <laughs> you know, but that, that, that is, you know, kind of the way phlegmatics are. They, they, they deep six their emotions, but when they do come out, watch out. Watch out. Yeah. Okay. Are you almost ready for your test? Okay. Well, we're going to have one. Challenges. Sometimes they avoid work, if not interested. They find the easy way to do things. Sometimes they can be selfish, teasing, fearful, quietly stubborn, lazy, quick to get up, give up. What do you think? I always try to find the easy way to do things. Do you? Work smart, not hard. Yeah. Right. I read the first one and the list is too long. Uh, the list is too long? I'm, I'm not quietly stubborn. I'm very out in the open stubborn. <laughs> okay. I would like everyone to take a foot here. And I need some helpers to pass these up. Okay. And we're going to have a test. Ah, uh, yes. Do we have some pencils? Pens? A pencil, a pen, something to write with. <clears throat> All right, are we ready? Okay. I want you to write down one characteristic that would relate to a personality. <laughs> okay. Of one child in your classroom. Back at church. One child that you know in church. One, one characteristic. Not whether they are saying one, not whether. But one characteristic of that child. One characteristic of a child that you have back at church in your classroom. Okay, everyone has that down? No? They're, they still have characteristics. No. <laughs> And then what happens after 40? <laughs> what happens? I see. Okay. Actually, they, sometimes they get entrenched in these personalities, but hopefully uh, we'll have some balance after 40. Sometimes it takes until 50 for that to happen, though, you know. Yeah. Okay. Everybody has something down? No? You want me to repeat it? No. No. Because what I want you to do is I want you to get up on your feet and I want you to find someone in the audience that you feel has something that relates to the, the, what, the trait that you wrote down. And then you have to figure out what temperament it is. So, if Karen has bossy. I don't know what she has on her sheet. I'm not going to look. But if she has bossy on her sheet, what is that? Choleric. 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 That means she has to find some other characteristics out there that are choleric. And I'm going to give you, oh, maybe five minutes to do this, five, ten minutes. Okay, remember, remember the characteristics that I said of each one. Okay, some were bossy, some were easygoing, some were sunshine, you know, 
So write something down of a child that you have in your classroom. I got it wrote down. Okay. So what are we supposed to do? Find now you somebody? find somebody else that has something that's similar to yours. That would have the same paper? Mm -mm. Or a, I um, know. You mean like a pencil or a paper? Or? No. It would be. So I go find somebody I think is easygoing. Mm, or has something that's similar to easygoing. Okay, so. Once we, once we find this person, what are we supposed to do? Just stay with them. Oh, okay. okay I'm finding somebody easygoing. <laughs> okay, you're looking for somebody that has a trait that is similar to what you have for a different, for a temperament. And when you find them, stay with them. Since you're from Detroit. Okay. Uh, what church do you go to? Oh, I don't live in Detroit. Oh, you don't? Live I live between Flint and Saginaw. Oh, well, okay. But That's I used fine. to go to Ann Arbor and, you know, in the Ipsy area. I lived in Holly all my life. Oh, did you? Yeah. Okay. Until I was 23, and then we moved down here. But yeah. My husband went to Adelphia. So did I. <laughs> but he's 80. You're not that old. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Almost. No, I <laughs> I came in late because I switched seminars. Okay. So I don't have a clue. No, I don't All have right. anything. I don't have a clue. Okay. Think of a child that you have in your classroom, okay? Mm -hmm. And write down some personality trait that they have. And then other people that were here kind of know what personality traits are a part of a temperament. So you have to find someone. So. Yeah, uh huh. So you'll find like some. crazy? You said think of us. I mean, you yeah. have to think long. That's the, okay, that's great. So I just now you find someone that that might fit into one of the temperaments with. Okay. And, and are you, you going to have a handout that tells what the temperaments and stuff are? Because yeah. I really I need this. Yes. Okay. I'm like traded seminars because I'm like, this isn't helping me with the family I need help with. I mean, like. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Hey, so what year did your husband go? Oh, gee. You see, my grandparents worked up there forever. That would probably have been 50, um, maybe 48, 49, let's see, 31. He was born in 31. It would have probably been about 48, 47, 48. I was born in that year. Yeah, I was too. Yeah, he's 70 years older than me. Because so. uh, I was just, you know, when you said... But his you name is William Washington, Bill Washington. Washington. Um, yeah. yeah. Now, I went to Cedar Lake. Oh, did you? Uh, okay, the rival. <laughs> well, you guys were the bougies. We were the farmers. <laughs> yeah. Oh, dear. Well, that's me. <laughs> I miss up there. My sister still lives in Battle Creek. Oh, my parents okay. live up in Mondo. Oh. My dad's 87. Okay. And he <laughs> still commutes this up the Osaba River. Oh, my goodness. You know, have you heard of the Osaba race? Yes. That all night long? Yes. Dad yes. did that this past July. Oh. <laughs> well, you know. I take after him. I take more after my mother. She's very. Not nothing. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Does everyone have their group? Okay. You need to be in your group because we're going to give, see if you pass the test. We passed it right by. You passed it right by? Okay. <laughs> No, you need to sit together because we're oh. going to test you. All right, are you ready? Okay.
Okay, is there anybody that has a child that is sanguine? All right, on the sheets, on the sheets. All right, we're going to see who the sanguine child is. Okay, uh, you want to tell us what you have there, that group? Well, all right, let's read what the sanguine is. The strength is sociable, wants to please, life of the party, daring, eager, chatting constantly, energized by people, inventive, imaginative, enthusiastic, and fun-loving. Is there any group that has somebody like that? Oh, no, I need to know if there's any group. Yes? Well, you all should be meeting each other. Okay, what do you have? <laughs> oh, wait a minute now. What do you have? Let's see what you have. Okay, talkative. That's sanguine. Life of the party wants to be. Uh huh. But is that a student in your class? Yes. Okay, so we have four right here that are sanguine. Five, six. Okay, so tell me, tell me what you have. Well, tell me what you have, and then we'll see if you're right. Easily distracted. What else? <laughs> okay, okay, shy, you had shy. Okay, what else? What did you have? Uh -huh. Cheerful, okay. All right, ladies, what did you have there? What did you write down? I wrote, for my first person, I wrote bossy and talkative. Bossy and talkative. Yeah. Mm. But she doesn't talk out of turn. But she doesn't talk out of turn. Okay. So they don't necessarily just jump in there. All right. Okay, anybody else a part of this little groupie over here? Okay. Well, what do you think? Do you think a sanguine is shy? Oh, no. No, no, no. They, they came from over there. <laughs> <laughs> so you're not a part of this group, right? Okay. All right, let's go over Sanguine again. You know what the strengths are. The challenges, impulsive, disorganizes, disorganized, craves attention, easily distracted, creative excuses. You know, my dog ate my paper, easily led astray, no follow through, short attention span, needs peer approval, loves to talk more than listen. So that's your person, right? Okay, the shy group, what do, who do you have? What, what do you have on your papers? Okay, so they, they're leaving me out by myself. You need to move. <laughs> Okay, how about this group on this end right here? What do you have? Phlegmatic, and what are the characteristics of phlegmatic? Okay, easy going, all right. Adjustable, okay. What else did you have? Okay, so it was just the three of you there? Four. Four. So you had easy, um, adjustable, and easygoing. Okay, all of you guys had that? Wow. Oh, lovable? Okay, all right. Well, I think you've got phlegmatic pinned. All right, how about up here? I have persistent and overly eager. I'm thinking choleric. Choleric, persistent, and overly eager. Does anybody else have a choleric? Competitive, okay. All right, so that's right, yes. Factual. factual. Okay. Mm -hmm. Are cholerics factual? Yes. At least in their own minds. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're right about that because they think they're right, right? Even if the facts aren't quite right. Okay. Yes. Right, right, yes. They like to run the classroom. Well, you got you cholerics found each other, right? Not that you are, but you're yeah. your child. Okay. How about over here? With you're with them. Right. What did you have? Gonna read. I split and split her. I'm sorry. Oh yeah, cleric there. Attention getter. Yep, that's cleric. Okay. Are you with them too? No. I'm the only one. You're the. I'm so different from all these people. Well, you know what. <laughs> There is a person over there that's shy that I think is different too. No, I put melancholy. You put we've got, yes, we've got one little child that he is melancholy from the word go. Okay. Would melancholy and shy? Yes. Okay. You need to come sit with your sister. <laughs> yeah, they were sitting next to each other. Okay, how about you two back there? Quiet. Busy. Yeah. If they're really busy, they're probably sanguine. And you're probably you could be either melancholy or phlegmatic. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. The a row back in the back. We don't know what we are. <laughs> Uh huh. The life, I mean, he's very alive, but he doesn't have a mean bone in his body. He's not rebellious. He's definitely sanguine. Very loving. Okay. All right. And what did you have? Okay. <laughs> no? Okay, how about over here? Oh, okay. Oh. Did you move? Oh, all right, you were with them. You, pardon? Right, if, if, right, if he wants to change it and, f well, that would be more melancholy if he goes into tears. If he's choleric, then he's like, do it now, you know, fix it. I have a, a, my oldest son is choleric, and I can remember him saying to my younger son, um, they were, I had them to put their Legos away one Friday evening, you know, we were getting, you know, straight for Sabbath. And I could hear Tyrone, who was two years older, saying to Troy, the red Legos go in this can, and the green Legos go in that can. And Troy looks at him, and he just dumps them. You know? <laughs> you know? But yeah, so the organized with the choleric is, you're going to do it this way, you know? Right. We have, all have a little, yeah. You know, we have to get it under control. I don't think my older one ever got it in control. He's a basketball coach. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. I, I heard Robert Rome talking about the personalities. And he pointed out with the, the challenges, he says, a weakness is a strength pushed too far. Mm. Mm -hmm. when it's a challenge, it's, it's a good thing, just take yeah. Pull it in. Yeah. Can he say this into the mic for us? <laughs> okay. Uh, a, uh, a weakness is a strength pushed too far. Robert Rome, he's a psychologist. 
Robert Rome, a psychologist from Atlanta, Georgia. I like that. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. I didn't get you guys right here, did I? No. We were a little confused whether it was the ones on the foot or in our hearts. And, and you guys talked about it. Well, well, I have thoughts about, and we were looking whether or not it's the <coughs> child that, we're, that has the characteristic, or is it the person, the adult? Who's here? Who has that characteristic? It's the child we're talking about. Yeah. So you're the mixed up group. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That sounds and good. Happy too. And you're happy. All right. <laughs> By the way, if any of you are doing training back in your um, churches or whatever, uh, this PowerPoint is available online at the Kids Ministries Ideas website where we have the online training or you can email me and I'll send it to you if you want to use it for something. Kids Ministries Ideas. It's um, the um, magazine that you have in your folder. It, the website is on there. Now I have to tell you something about that magazine and that is that each issue is a basic certification class, all right? So there is a magazine on multiple intelligences. The one I believe that you have in your folder is teaching children to think. So that is a, a certification class. Oh, thank you. This is the one I'm talking about. So this issue is teaching children to think. We have a class teaching th children to think. And if you go to the website, then the PowerPoints are there and you can actually do your certification online. And I think that you plan to have that on your website too, right? Okay, great. Okay, let me see if I do it right. It's kidsministryideas.com? No, dot org. I know it's in here. I think it's .org. No, it's .com. It's www.kidsministryideas, all one word, .com. Yes? That is a very good question. I think we should all adjourn to Barbara's room. <laughs> I think it's a, little, um, it's a little difficult, more difficult to tell because there's some other things that are being factored in. But I tend to think that all Down syndrome children are uh, phlegmatic because they're just so loving and, you know, um, I, you know but I don't know. I really don't know. I, that's a question that maybe I can ask her and get an answer for you. Yeah. If, if you watch how they respond to certain situations, if you answer the two questions, are they energized by being around people mm -hmm. or not, that, that cuts your, your areas in half. And then are they more task-oriented or process-oriented? Mm -hmm. Do they want to accomplish something? That's more the polarity. Well, I'm kind of thinking of the, uh, the autistic child, you know, who that would be, it, it seems like that would be hard to measure, you know, I don't know. You probably have to go individually with that child mm -hmm. and he probably doesn't fit into a category. Probably has, you, you would probably have to study them individually. Yeah, I, I think that you're right that we could find out, but I think that you'd have to, like you said, really study them and study them harder because it would be more difficult. I mean, I can think of some of my, um, my patients at the hospital, you know exactly what they are, um, but they're, they don't have a, uh, a challenge that is so uh, pronounced as, you know, like autism or, you know, someone on that spectrum. Um, I'm thinking of a little... Um, a renal patient who definitely wanted to be in control 
and she was refusing uh, her dialysis one day with the nurses and basically saying unless you bring me a teddy bear and a couple of games and you know or whatever I'm not going to submit to this definitely choleric you know <laughs> um, and I walked in a little black child okay and it's like girl you better get your act together you're gonna you know, blah, 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 you know whatever and she's like yes ma'am you know <laughs> But, you know, but it, she was going to be in control of this situation. And it's like, this is to keep you alive. You're not going to pull this. Yeah. Well, and we need to keep in mind, that's really the reason for learning about the personalities. Not so that we can label somebody, oh, you're this, you're this, you're this. But to know, okay, this is how they tend to respond. How do I need to deal with them? Yes. And, and that's a reason for knowing your own, too. Oh, because if you're choleric and you're, mm -hmm. um, you can be intimidating to a, a melancholy child. Yes, very. Very much <laughs> so, you know, yes. When I was working downtown Chattanooga, I had 35 to 50 kids a night, every night. And one night, we had a good crowd there, and I had my people out in the hall hallway registering. I hear this ruckus. <coughs> And I step out the door, and there's this little boy wrestling with these grown men, <laughs> fighting tooth and nail. And they said, he, his grandmother wants him in your class, and he doesn't want to go. And he's fighting. He's just carrying on. And this little voice in my head said, scold him. So I went over there. I said, you stop that right now. He stopped, and he looked at me. I said, now get in there and sit down. And he went in there and sat down. Well, then the lady who was trying to get him working with us, she says, well, if he's going to behave, he can go back. I thought, what part of sit down did you not hear? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She took him back. Ten minutes later, he's in the hallway wrestling with these men again, trying to get him back into the room. So I went out there, and I got onto him again, and this one of the men was a young pastor, and he looked at me shocked, <laughs> and the little boy stopped. And he sat in some chairs in the hall, and he made a face at me. So I made a face back at him. And he made another face at me, and when he did, I just went. <laughs> he busted out laughing. You all didn't see this. <laughs> you want to see my face? He, he, was, he was being sarcastic going. And I just went. <laughs> And he busted out laughing and was my best friend after that. And I apologize for his actions. Well. Okay. <laughs> there is a book that uh, is on the market that I think is very good. It's called Teaching with Heart. Have you ever heard, heard that? Teaching with Heart. It's put out by Standard Publishers. And it goes through all of the temperaments, learning styles, multiple intelligences, and things like that. And it will tell you um, what you need to do in your classroom to deal with certain temperaments. It's, it's the best one that I have seen, you know, that will help you do that. I don't think we put it, um, well, yeah, we did. We put some teaching tips in here, okay? But if you pick that up, and, and it can be, it's, it's one of these books where you can reproduce the pages and use it for training in your, um, in your churches. But it would be great, you know, if you would do that. And I think that you will enjoy uh, having it. But teaching tips for the sanguines provide active, fun times. Why? Because they're bouncing off the wall with all that sunshine anyway, right? For the cholerics, encourage leadership. They need to be in charge of something, you know, so give them something to do. For the melancholy, have a well-planned program. Remember, they like schedules, they like routine. Um, they um, can get pretty depressed when they are not, you know, on schedule. And for the phlegmatics, provide a peaceful, respectful place. Does that sound right? Okay.
have a little handout for you. I won't leave you without anything. Can you help me? And it basically just gives you um, a little heads up on all of the temperaments so that you will be able to uh, work well with them. Um, she's got the other half, so I think there. Do we have enough, or do I need to run off some more? Didn't get any. That particular one is not. Yeah, I'll, I'll, get, I'll have them to make some copies and I'll have them out there after the next meeting. Does that sound okay? As long as I can get one back. <laughs> okay. Um, so, um, Fernando, is it possible that I could get someone to go and make some, some copies? Okay. How about how many, about what? Maybe about 20? 20? I'd say about 20. Okay. Okay. I have another little test for you. Here's some Bible characters. What type of personality do you think Peter was? What do you think? Choleric. You think choleric? He had a little sanguine? I think he was a mixture of the choleric and the sanguine because I think of him at the last summer when Jesus told him if he didn't wash his feet, he could have no part of him. And he's like, okay, my head, but you know, wash all of me. To me, that person is the kind of person that is the life of the party. It wasn't anything unless he was there. Okay. <laughs> Do you agree with her? Yes. Okay, so a combination of sanguine and choleric? Okay. How about Jonah? <laughs> You're saying choleric? I think he was pretty depressed. <laughs> okay, he was, he was very negative about everything, wasn't he? I mean, even after he went to Nineveh, he was upset because God, you know, yes. Uh-huh. All right, what was that? Well, that's being negative about the positive. <laughs> okay. Yes, I'm pretty sure he was melancholy. Okay. How about um, Mary? Mary. What's Mary? Like Mary. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking Mary, mother of Jesus. Phlegmatic. Phlegmatic, yes. Okay. Everybody in the back didn't get one. Okay. All right. Abraham? How about Abraham? He was very faith trusted God completely. Okay, what are some of the characteristics of Abraham? He, he had a lot of faith he, to get up and leave his country and his people. He still wanted to do some things his own way. He's a leader. Caring. He was a leader. Do you think he was well balanced? You don't think he was much fun? He might have been fun, but he had a lot of responsibility. He did have a lot of responsibility. He's like the head of the corporation. Mm -hmm. And people in that position usually aren't a lot of fun because they're thinking about what they have to do, but I think maybe. Deep down inside, he could have been fun, maybe. It sure doesn't come out. No. 
Yeah. Not so much to him because if it's going to serve his purpose, then it's the rule. If it doesn't serve his purpose, it doesn't apply. I like that. What about, do you think he might be a, a combination between phlegmatic and choleric? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do, you, do you see any phlegmatic there? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Moses yeah. definitely yeah. did do yeah. some tapering off. Okay. How about Joseph? Which Joseph? The Joseph that was put in the pit by his brothers oh, and man. ended up in Egypt. Phlegmatic. Phlegmatic. He was choleric. Yeah. Was yeah, choleric, phlegmatic. I think he was a bit melancholy to begin with. Yeah. Well, I don't know about that. Okay, yes. <laughs> well, if it takes that long, I don't think we're going to make it, some of us. <laughs> okay, but you know what? Something he said is very important because how many of you have had to take care of one of your senior citizens? Okay, yeah, I've, uh, I've taken care of four now, okay? Uh, two aunts, my mother and my dad. And boy, the change from what they were yeah. to what they were when they died is just, yeah. wow, you know. So it is kind of a mellowing out and, and the closer you get to God and, you know, those kinds of things, all of those temperaments kind of, kind of even out. Okay, one more and then I'm going to have to close. Paul. He was all of the above. You, you agree with that over here? Yep. Definitely Definitely, at least when he was killing off everybody, he was definitely, <laughs> definitely choleric. Um, okay. But he was ready. <laughs> yes, I see a waving of a hand back there. <laughs> Well, believe me, if you don't want to be mean and grumpy when you're old, yeah. you need to kind of work on it before you get there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes, it's absolutely. Not, it's not often that we kind of directly hear from our friends what they think of us, even though we know, kind of. My friend got me this, that when she saw this, she thought of me instantly. And I thought, well, that is so sweet because of what's on here. What it says is happy and joy dream and big. dream big and all of those things. And it's wonderful if somebody's thinking that about you. Well, what I challenge you to do is go online, Google temperaments tests, and while you're in there, also Google multiple intelligences and learning styles and, and all of those things that kind of make and shape us, who, you know, who we are. Because believe me, when you start teaching kids, you're going to run into some brick walls, and sometimes it might be because of your temperament, your learning style. You know, you tend to teach out of your learning style. 
uh, or what your, gift, what your giftedness is in. And if you have an understanding of that, then you're definitely going to understand how you need to relate to your children.